Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's special Committee of the Whole meeting. This meeting is called to order. Uh, the chair recognizes that all the council members are present with three council members joining us remotely, Alderman Mayer, Alderman Maladra, and Alderman Bruno. Folks, before we begin our business tonight, and there is only one item of business tonight, I do want to share with the council on the off chance you're not aware and ask for your indulgence as we uh, pay tribute, if you will, to these employees and their families. Um, last week, the Public Works Department, uh, two of our professional staff, James Miranda, who works for the Electric Department, lost his mom. And Steve Smith, who works for our Streets Department, lost his father. So our friends at the Public Works Department have been hit hard with some sad news. Um, and I would hope that we could all just, just for a moment, um, offer a moment of silence to let Steve and Jim know that we're thinking about them and their families. And I would appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. And of course, on a high note, to our friends in Public Works, uh, again, excellent job on the snow removal. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Where is it? Nate, well done, man. You look tired. I'm tired. Yeah? I'm tired, and so are my guys. I bet they are, man. Did you do what we normally do, just dump it all in St. Charles? Push it all to the north. Push. That's good. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, under item 2A, we have a presentation and discussion regarding the fiscal year 2023 budget and fiscal year 2024 budget projections. The presentation will be led by City Administrator Dawkins, and all of you will note, and those joining us remotely, not certain if you can see, but all our department heads and other essential all of our staff are essential. Uh, city staff are with us as well, including Mr. Nelson, obviously Mr. Landers. Who else is back there? Mr. Van Geskum. Good God, Aaron Holton. Life is good, man. Good to see you guys. With that, Stephanie, okay. it's all yours. We are set. So as usual, tonight's presentation is meant to be an overview of the recommended 2023 budget and a preview of the fiscal year 24 budget. We recognize that there is a lot of information to digest, but we wanted to give you some context to go with the numbers that were in tonight's agenda packet. Um, I do respectfully request that we keep questions until the end of the presentation. And there, are, there will be time at the end to ask questions, and also we have time built into the schedule at a later date to ask more in-depth questions if you have them. Computer's slow today. Um, so I always like to start with just talking about what a budget is. It's a good practice to start to the basics, not just for you all, but for anybody who may be watching who is unfamiliar with the municipal budget. As many of you have heard me state previously, a budget is a plan of expenditures balanced by revenues for a given period of time. In our case, that period of time is a fiscal year, May 1 to April 30th. The municipal budget requires fund accounting, which means that each individual budget stands on its own with the revenues contained therein. In addition, we are required to have a balanced budget. So our anticipated expenditures must be less than or equal to the anticipated revenues, which also includes any authorized use of fund balance. There are various roles and responsibilities associated with the creation, preparation, and adoption of the budget. The slide before you outlines those various roles. The City Council has the sole authority by a majority vote to adopt the annual budget. City staff in our various roles recommend a budget based upon the principles identified earlier, the council's strategic priorities as outlined at our November workshop, and the general operational needs of any given department. But ultimately, it is you, the council, that have the final say on what is included or excluded. In addition, as the budget is a plan, things happen. Therefore, the city council also has the authority to amend a budget by a two-thirds majority vote.
Many often mistakenly believe that the budget is a forecast of the amount the local government expects to spend. While that may be true, the reality is that the budget is the maximum amount that it is allowed to be spent. Obviously, again, absent any amendment. As such, many times at the end of the fiscal year, the expenditures may, be, may appear to be below budget. This is by design. It is not that the budget is padded, but rather that we have stayed within the budgeted plan of expenditures. The City Council should be proud of the work that they have accomplished over the past several years. The City is on solid financial footing based upon decisions and actions taken by this Council. This is evidenced by a re-rating from Moody's this past fall, reaffirming the City's AA2 rating, and the Government Finance Officers Association recognizing the City's efforts in budgeting and financial reporting. Uh, you'll notice that the numbers in parentheses, that's the number of consecutive years that we have received those awards. The general fund projections based upon year-end estimates and the fiscal year 2023 proposed budget indicates that the City will maintain a fund balance exceeding the goal of at least 90 days operating expenditures in compliance with the City's financial policies. This is the result of the City Council making a concerted effort following the Great Recession to position the City with the resources to provide the flexibility to meet unexpected costs and position the City to take advantage of unexpected opportunities. And I think all of us can agree over the last three years we may have had a lot of those unexpecteds, be it good or bad. In addition, the City is now in a position to make investments in capital equipment and infrastructure that has been de deferred for several years. All news, however, is not positive. The most recent consumer price index for all items was 7% in December 2021. The CPI is a measure of the average change over time in the prices paid by urban consumers for a market basket of consumer goods and services. The CPI is most widely used to measure inflation and is often used as a guide to make economic decisions. In sum, goods and services cost more today than they did previously. This has had a direct influence and impact on the city's budget. In the slide there, you probably can't see it, but this is from the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, showing the CPI since December of 2001 all the way through December of 2021. Even with inflation and reduced purchasing power, the city is well positioned due to prudent planning and strategic thinking. The City Council annually participates in a strategic planning workshop designed to look not only at the upcoming fiscal year, but beyond. The recommended budget presented this evening represents three core principles. It maintains the city's solid financial position, it maintains core city services, and at the same time is forward thinking. As department heads and other super, supervisory staff began the budgeting submittal process, they kept in mind the strategic plan priorities identified by the City Council at the November workshop. Projects and operations that supported these items were given priority. You will note a reference to the strategic plan as you review departmental goals, which are on page 102 of tonight's agenda packet. I will also provide an overview this evening of the three major funds the General Fund, the Electric Fund, and the Water and Wastewater Fund. In addition, I will provide some brief commentary regarding the other funds. Lastly, all of the information presented this evening and included in the packet is in draft form. This provides the opportunity for further refinement and or additions prior to the anticipated adoption on February 7th, 2022. In addition, we have set aside next Monday, January 31st, for additional discussion and review if desired by the City Council. So we'll start with the general fund. This slide provides a summary of that fund. Revenues are budgeted at an amount 5.4% more than, was, than what was budgeted for fiscal year 2022. This includes the use of $500,000 from fund balance. While we tend to compare budget to budget, it may be valuable to note that projected revenues are currently trending above budgeted. Operations, which includes personnel, contractual, and commodity expenses, are budgeted to increase 4% over the current year. 
transfers from the general fund to other funds also increases nearly 27 percent including the 500,000 to general capital projects fund and another 800,000 to the capital equipment fund I will discuss these funds a little later in the presentation The general fund derives the majority of its revenues from three major sources, property tax, sales tax, which includes non-home rule sales tax, and state income tax. This slide indicates how the property tax is calculated and what portion of that tax comes back to the city. Things to note, the city's property tax rate has decreased again for the sixth consecutive year. This is primarily due to an increase in the equalized assessed valuation and no debt attributed to the general fund. With the property tax levy that the City Council approved in December, it is estimated that a home with a market value of $350,000 will pay approximately $50 per month or $600 annually to the City in property taxes. I want to briefly talk um, just a little bit about the debt service. So as I mentioned, the final debt payments uh, for the general fund were made this fiscal year. And so this shows the city's debt payments over the past several years. With there being no further debt attributed to the general fund, the debt service fund has now been closed out. So in previous years, you would have seen a separate budgeted fund called debt service fund. You will not see that this year because it is at zero and has been closed. But back to property tax and the services received for that. So $600 annually in property taxes a resident receives the services indicated on the right side of the slide. I would argue this is the best value you get for your dollar. However, it costs far more to provide these services than the revenue provided from property taxes. So where does that remaining revenue funding come from? The chart on the left identifies where the revenue comes from and the chart on the right identifies the expenditures. Property taxes equate to approximately 27% of the general fund revenues. That's that kind of bright green color up in the top right corner of the left side pie chart. Um, the same color slice on the right, which is expenditures, is the operating budget of the fire department. As you can see, the operations of the fire department equate to approximately the same dollar amount received in property taxes but yet property taxpayers received far more services than just fire services. That's where sales tax, state income tax, permitting, licensing, and other fees come in. It is through this varied revenue stream that the general operations of the city are supported. The fiscal year 2023 budget includes personnel changes, including a recommendation to eliminate an interim position in the community development department and add the position of assistant city planner. The community development department has seen demands on the department grow exponentially over the past couple of years, making it difficult to complete department goals, code updates, long range planning projects, and general policy discussions on topics requested by the city council. The addition of a full-time assistant city planner will provide the department with the opportunity to further evaluate roles and responsibilities, streamline processes, complete lingering projects, and cross-train for coverage and succession planning. The fiscal year 23 budget also includes the addition of a full-time firefighter as negotiated in the collective bargaining agreement. From an operational perspective, there are several new initiatives that are contemplated to occur during fiscal year 23. Some projects require additional funding, while most, staff, most are staff time only. A couple of examples are outlined on the slide along with the priority strategic goal that they represent. Um, so you can see up there, there's um, some long range planning, some software to help improve processes, uh, looking at opportunities to replace vehicles with electric vehicles and, and the like. As indicated in the general fund summary slide, the fiscal year 23 budget includes $1.3 million in transfers to other funds. Funding for the Cultural Arts Commission and Beautification Committee are consistent with funding provided this current year. Uh, this is due to the inability to conduct their own fundraising activities as limited by statute. The transfer to SPAC is to continue the support the strategic planning process, 
and transfers to both general capital projects and capital equipment are to support the requirements of those funds as they have no dedicated revenue source. As compared to the infrastructure capital fund that is funded by a half percent non-home rule sales tax. The general capital budget totals 1.2 million for fiscal year 23. Included are facility building repairs and improvements. I should note that these are projects that would be required regardless of what may happen with facilities planning in the future. In addition, there is a funding request for an update to the garden club park. This was initiated by a request from the Geneva Park District in conjunction with the Garden Club. The Geneva Park District maintains the park under an IGA with the city. They would like to invest a little more than 300,000 in redoing and reimagining the park. The request for the city was to provide 50% funding. Also included is a downtown market study that was originally programmed for the tourism fund for fiscal year 20, but was deferred due to COVID. It is now programmed in the General Capital Projects Fund. The existing market study was completed 15 years ago, and the purpose of a new study is to provide an analysis of downtown visitor market to inform tourism marketing expenditures and destination business recruitment strategies. The capital equipment budget totals 2.5 million for fiscal year 23. We have been experiencing long lead times on acquiring vehicles and equipment, so there is some uncertainty as to what may actually be acquired during this fiscal year and the next. We have also requested funding for a remote brush mower that will be used to mow many of the detention ponds that are difficult to access with regular equipment. As with the previous slides, you will note that these expenditures that relate directly to the city's council's stated strategic plan priorities for fiscal 23 are noted on the slide. For fiscal 23, neither the electric nor the water and wastewater utilities are proposing rate adjustments. However, I would note that there is a likelihood that such adjustments may be required in the future. Similar to the general fund slide, this slide represents revenues on the left and expenditures on the right. The majority of revenue for the electric fund is derived from the sale of electricity. Much like the majority of expenditures is related to the administration operations and maintenance of the utility. So again, those two pie pieces you can see are similarly sized. In the electric division, planning for the design and infrastructure for the Southeast Area Master Plan will continue with anticipated expenditures by way of a bond issuance for a substation and related feeders. In addition, underground cable upgrades continue. And you can see there's a few, I gave you some highlights of what was accomplished in calendar year 21, and then a couple of the other uh, capital projects that are under consideration. I would also note we did also receive a grant for some of that uh, infrastructure improvements. Again, looking at the water and wastewater fund, the pie chart on the left is related to revenue and the pie chart on the right is related to expenditures. Similar to electric, the majority of revenue is derived from water and sewer sales, and the majority of expenditures is related to the production, treatment, distribution, and collection of water and wastewater. In the water and wastewater division, capital expenditures related to the design of a second sanitary sewer river crossing and the cleaning and replacement of the spotlight for the Logan Water Tower are included in the fiscal year 23 proposed budget, along with various other projects relating to the wastewater treatment plant, water main projects, and vehicle equipment and purchases. The remaining funds that comprise the city's total budget are summarized on this slide and total $23.2 million. Miscellaneous funds include SSAs, pension funds, workers' compensation, and the like. As you can see, we have 36 various funds. Some highlights from the miscellaneous fund budgets are outlined on this slide along with the Strategic Plan Priority Association. Funding for the Geneva History Museum has been included as directed by the City Council from hotel motel tax revenues. 
It should be noted, however, that the fund balance at the end of fiscal year 23 is estimated to be below the city's fund balance policy of 25%. This is something that will need to be reviewed and or addressed during the fiscal year 24 budget process. As everyone is aware, the hotel motel industry was hard hit during the pandemic, as were the city's revenues for this fund. The East State Street road construction project right-of-way acquisition is expected to be in full swing during fiscal year 2023. But of course, as you know, anything can happen, but we are, we are moving forward still on that project, so don't give up hope yet. The city is a recipient of the um, American Rescue Plan Act funding from the federal government. A total of $2.9 million will be received in two tranches. The first was received in September, and the second will come no sooner than September of this year. The final rules governing how these funds may be spent was just released on January 6th of this year. As such, this budget only reflects minimally the re revenue from this funding. $700,000 has been programmed in the Infrastructure Capital Projects Fund for citywide storm drainage improvement projects. As discussed with the City Council at Strategic Planning, the remaining funding is anticipated to be used towards lead line replacement, facility improvements, and reinvestment in the downtown area. As noted, as long as the funds are budgeted by December 31st, 2024, and expended by December 31st, 2026, there is time to ensure sound fiscal planning for the use of these funds. In all, the city budgets 36 separate funds. When taken as a whole, the entire city's budget increased 9.2% from fiscal year 2022. This is primarily the result of an increase in capital spending, deferred and or delayed projects. The general fund is budgeted to increase 5.4%, less than the CPI of 7% that was discussed earlier. The fiscal year 2024 forecast is currently estimated to decrease, again primarily due to a reduction in capital expenditures. Although given some of the continued delays in supplies and equipment, many projects may carry over to 2024 from 2023. In summary, the budget is a planning document. It outlines the anticipated maximum expenditures. The budget presented to you this evening is a balanced budget where all funds, all funds, in all funds, expenditures are less than or equal to anticipated revenue, including the use of fund balance where appropriate. The city's financial position due to our continued responsible approach to budgeting and forecasts is anticipated to remain stable throughout the current fiscal year and upon conclusion of fiscal year 2023. I would like to close out this presentation by thanking those who helped put this budget together for your consideration. First, I would like to acknowledge and thank our senior management team and their respective staffs, most of who are here this evening, uh, for working together to put together a fiscally sound budget for your review and consideration. Through the efforts of all, we are able to present to you a balanced budget that represents the values stated in the strategic plan and best serves the citizens of this community. The recommended budget as presented this evening is available to the public on the city's website. In addition, we have set aside, as I mentioned, next Monday for a special committee of the whole to provide the city council with additional time for discussion and review if desired. And lastly, a public hearing has been published for February 7th at the beginning of the city council meeting, and the city council will be asked to consider and improve a resolution adopting the fiscal year 2023 budget that same evening. I recognize that a lot of information was presented this evening and in the packet. I encourage you to take some time to review the information. It is our in, um, intent tomorrow to send you all the actual Excel spreadsheets and also variance reports uh, that should help assist in your review of the budget. Department heads and supervisors are all present this evening and they're happy to entertain any questions you may have. Um, in addition, as we have done in the past, I would encourage the City Council to submit any questions in writing to me. Questions submitted by noon each Friday will be posted with the responses to the City's website the following Monday afternoon. I again thank you for your time this evening, your leadership and support throughout this past year, 
And now um, I will return it the floor to the mayor and he can entertain any questions the council might have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, there is no action being taken tonight, but we do encourage and welcome all discussion, debate, and questions. So, Alderman Swanson, sir. Thank you. Good question. There you go. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I wanted to clarify my position on the Geneva History Museum, uh, given that I have been a former board member and former president of the board, and my wife currently is on the board of the Geneva History Museum. I wanted to state that I have, my wife and I have no financial interest in the Geneva History Museum. We will not benefit in any way financially if the city does fund any portion of their finances. And my interest in this matter is to provide the greatest benefit to the city of Geneva. I would not uh, vote or talk about this issue if I thought I could not objectively and fairly undertake my obligations to Geneva. And I'm confident that I'm looking at this matter solely through the lens of my council duties. So thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open for anyone joining us remotely. I'll defer to you first, Alderman Mayor, Maladra or Bruno, any questions or comments? Observations, Alderman Maladra, sir? Yeah, um, I just would like to ask Stephanie, when you send the spreadsheets, can you send the PowerPoint deck as well? I guess I should have mentioned that too. The PowerPoint will also be posted on the city's website tomorrow morning, um, but I can also send you a copy. Either way, that's good, thanks. Alderman Bruno, sir. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Stephanie. Um, I'm always uh, impressed and thankful uh, that we have uh, uh, have the staff we have uh, led by you uh, for this for this effort. Uh, but to the point of the uh, history museum that we discussed uh, not long ago, uh, I, I didn't find details in there. Uh, in the uh, I, I don't know exactly how much was put in there. I believe our discussion was uh, that forty thousand. So we, uh, the, as I took it, the direction from a council was to, to do one fifth of the anticipated revenues. So that would be 20% and we're anticipating 255,000. So that's $51,000 that has been budgeted. Again, keep in mind though, we only pay that as the revenues, you know, if the revenues come in. So it's not like we cut a check May one for 51,000. Sure. We have to actually have revenues to support that, that expenditure. God, God, I just couldn't remember the, uh, the precise, uh, metrics on that. Uh, but again, uh, thank you and thank you to all the staff for, uh, for all the work that goes into this. Alderman Mayor. Yeah, Stephanie, can you explain what you were saying about the 25% uh, balance in that fund? I didn't quite follow what sure. that was about. Um, several years ago, the city council adopted financial policies and in those policies, it says that we will strive again, it's not a hard set number, but we will strive to maintain a 25% fund balance in our funds. There's a couple exceptions, mostly um, in the utilities, but all other funds we look to, to have 25%. So at the end of this coming fis at fiscal year 2023, once we uh, conclude with all revenues and expenditures, that fund balance amount is going to drop. It is estimated to 19.5%. So it's just a note that it's going below that, that anticipated or that recommended fund balance of 25%. And again, that's all estimated based on estimated revenues and based on estimated expenditures. Okay. Anything else, Alderman Mayor? Alderman Marks. Stephanie, just, you, you might not have this answer, but you know, last year we did a, pro, a forecast for this year's budget. How close was it to, are we pretty much where we thought we'd be or? or so if that was, I didn't see that in here, but there was a lot to so, go through. So, I mean, did, did you say last year you talked about the No, well, when we looked at the budget that we are currently in now, we also forecasted this year. Right. Um, is yeah, I, are, yeah I, I, I just wondered how close we are with those forecasts because I mean I know you spend a lot of time on, on, on those too. I, what I would say is on some of the operational and contractual and those things we're usually pretty 
Microphone, please. Uh, on the, sorry. <laughs> on some of the like operational and contractual were usually pretty close unless there's a huge change, which like we saw this year, there was a huge change in our lawn service maintenance contract. Mm -hmm. Um, where you'll see the biggest difference is in our capital projects okay, because we don't always know what's coming or what's needed. And so, and I can, I can tell you, in fact, looking at 2024 capital equipment, there's a lot lacking that will likely be budgeted for 2024. But part of that is, again, we don't know what the supply chain is doing and, and kind of how this current year we're in is going to shape up to help. That was my next question. Help do we know what happens two years hence? Do we know how much of this year's is going to have to bleed over? I mean, that we're just we, going to carry over? We are over? still keeping fingers crossed that we will have some things delivered. Okay. <laughs> um, but quite frankly, I, I think everybody is maybe I know. as That's tired as hearing it about as I am, but supply chain, um, lack of labor. Um, yeah, I just I know. participated okay. in a financial forecast and it's the same things we've been hearing and unfortunately we have no control and we've also been there's been times where they'll call us and say we have a vehicle now we need a check come get it so um maybe this is for for um, mr babica but we've got a brush mower in there for for isn't that mostly uh, outsourced though to by the ssas for another uh, for an outside company to do so all i'm actually going to let um nate address okay, this because sorry. this is this is i'll give credit this is nate's brainchild okay um it's really pretty cool actually. that's fine <laughs> uh, it just it, it kind of stuck out because normally we outsource that that's why i was asking sure. um, uh, i've got some great video i can i can show okay. you it's, it's, it's actually a very cool uh, very cool tool but uh so we have some uh ponds in the in the ssas that uh, uh Unfortunately, I know don't. one right by fire station too. <laughs> okay, well, yes, there's one. Yes, absolutely. There's that's a great example of it, uh, where you know we have cattails, uh, water sitting down on the bottom of it. Uh, conventional mowers can't fit in it. Um, we've rented brush mowers through the years. Uh, typically, we do it twice a year uh, to to get into those areas and cut that cut those areas down. Um, this particular mower only has about two pounds of uh, ground force, so it's actually less than me standing here right now, or you sitting there even. Uh, so it, it floats right through it. Um, and this would then be, if we were to purchase it and we do go forward with it, we would do it on a monthly basis and help keep those uh, cattails and stuff down. Um, West Street has a huge issue there. That pond is a disaster, for lack of a better term. Uh, we rented it more earlier this summer and had multiple uh, residents out cheering us on taking videos of it, clapping. Uh, we're very thankful that we were actually trying to do something to get in there. Abs absolutely. And, as yeah. we and I, I would point out there. it's a remote controlled mower. Yes, it is. So it, it also um, helps protect our, our personnel from having to be in those kind of yes. treacherous situations. Absolutely. It's completely remote controlled. So our staff will be running that. Our, our staff will be running it. We uh, also have spaces for uh, Aaron. He's got uh, some some areas that have some heavy brush that they try to get through uh, that just doesn't work very well with the other brush mowers, standard brush mowers. So. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Anything else, sir? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Alderwoman Burkhart. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephanie, thanks for the great presentation. Um, I heard about an assisted city planner, so that would be a new position, right? Correct. And, uh, and then the new firefighter that's under the contract. Uh, and would the facilities manager be new to this budget that we're talking about or is? Well, it, it was authorized to be filled the current year. So it will continue into this, the fifth school year, 2023. Gotcha. So the numbers that you see include all of those dollars. And so are those, those are the three new positions or two new positions and one we've already. Correct. Gotcha, okay. Um, could we hear some about the assistant city planner and the, a little bit more about sure, the Sure, I'm going to, again, I'm going to let David sure. um, come up and talk about it a little bit. Sure, good evening. Um, good evening. Where would you like to start? <laughs> well, I know your department's been very busy for a few years now, and so right. uh, if you could tell us about what the, what, why that role is needed and, um, you know, how, how it would help sure. provide better customer service. So um, just this, this fiscal year we're in right now, we are about double what we typically have for planning and zoning commission applications. Um, 
so that has made it really hard to kind of do any kind of special projects, policy discussions, um, code updates, long range plan updates, um, which are really necessary. Uh, we have several parts of the city code that haven't been touched in 20 years. We have plans that are getting long in the tooth too that really need to be updated. Um, one of the goals for next year is to have a policy discussion with the council on those plans and prioritize which ones need to be um, updated. But we really don't have the manpower with the current workload we have to, to do any of those special projects. Um, for the past, I think we're in year 11 of having a part-time intern kind of fulfill those duties. Um, in, the, in the planning division, we don't have an administrative assistance. We rely on, rely on the intern pretty heavily for invoices and helping us out with research and stuffing envelopes and mailers and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and you know, with an intern, uh, we've gotten good work out of them. I don't want to discredit any of the interns we have um, had, but there's an onboarding process. You know, many of them come to us without any kind of background in planning or zoning. Um, so there's kind of a, a learning curve there. They're restricted to 20 to 24 hours a week and their schedule changes every eight weeks. So every time we feel like we get in a groove with them with certain tasks that we rely on on, on a weekly basis or monthly basis, that changes. <laughs> um, and then of course, when they graduate, that's in May, which is peak construction season for us and really kind of drains the department. Um, you know, it's a, it's a two year program through NIU, which is great. Um, because it's about as long of an internship as you can get. But right when we think we've really got them up and running, it's time to start the hiring process all over again. Um, so we thought by eliminating that position and going for like an entry level assistant city planner, we might be able to get some more longevity, somebody with some planning background that doesn't take as long to onboard. And that could really help us out with some of these special projects and kind of keep them moving. So that was my question was that would that be somebody at the near the beginning of their career uh, assistant right. city planner would be yeah, it'd be at least a bachelor's degree um, hopefully some internship experience at least or one or one to three years professional experience but it would be that entry level planner position and would that person be able to handle more of the day-to-day -day work so that perhaps you, that you know Chayton could handle some of the deeper dives or that would be the, the idea they can handle some of the zoning inquiries we get on a routine basis they can help us with some of the easier applications we get through um, checking applications for completeness processing FOIA requests um, doing some of those day-to-day -day tasks like um, invoice payables updating the content on the website and then just kind of cross training them between historic preservation and planning so they can serve as a number two in the, in the event that somebody's on vacation or out on medical leave or something and then succession planning as well. We figure some of them may be moving on eventually. It'd be good to have somebody to kind of be able to step up if needed. Very good. Thank you. That takes care of me on that one. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Alderman Gilbert. Uh, for David. While you're up there, uh, did, uh, how did the economics look on that? Uh, wh what were we paying an intern uh, for those 20 to 24 hours? Uh, are we looking at about doubling uh, the expenditure? Uh, I think I might need some help from Ben on the exact difference. Uh, uh, but the internship, I think, is is about $18,000 a year that we budget okay. for that position. So, so entry level, we'd be looking at what, 60, something like that, maybe, or more? So Probably high 60s. OK. With, with benefits and everything you're looking at, the general fund impact is about fifty thousand okay. dollars give or take um, the intern all came out of the general fund an assistant city planner would come out of several funds so you would um, the you general fund around. impact yeah it would be 54 and then it would also hit the electric and water funds as well okay good thanks Dave you're welcome I I had another Sir. question and uh, it was uh, the elect or okay public works first of all uh, Obviously, uh, labor is a big issue uh, right now, uh, finding replacement uh, for the workforce. I know Public Works is probably our, our most, em most of our employees, or a large percentage of our employees are Public Works. How, uh, how are we situated uh, as we look at 2022? Uh, are we short in any areas? How's uh, the hiring process going uh, when we need to replace someone? Uh, and I know that's over a variety of different skill sets, 
but uh, maybe you might be just prepared to comment on that uh, if you wouldn't mind. Welcome, Mr. Babica. It should be noted, and I believe Mr. Babica and Mr. Marks might share the same birthday last uh, February, or excuse me, February, January 21st, correct? That's correct. And uh, Mr. Pre also. 20th, you're the 20th. Okay. And who else? <clears throat> Tim Pre. Holy mo that's right. Good Lord. January is a good month for birthdays in uh, public Apparently. works. Today is Dan Dobnik's birthday. I'm sure he's watching somewhere up in the UP. I'm sure he <laughs> While he's rehabilitating at the local uh, corner establishment. Yes, indeed. Enjoying his cake. Uh, so Public Works has a number of current vacancies within the positions, uh, probably most notably, which we're, we're working with uh, administrative services is uh, filling Barb Nikoloff's position who retired in January. So that is a position that we're going through the final stages, getting ready to that to post. There is an opening within the street division uh, from a uh, voluntary separation. And then there's also an opening within the, uh, there's a lineman position that's open. And that is one we're kind of we're holding to rotate through an apprentice that's going to be earning his journeyman card here in April. So, so we have three vacant, three open positions right now. Okay. So, and the, the, uh, the total number of employees under your supervision, I mean, what it, what would that come at approximately? It's a 57 full-time equivalent, okay. including so, myself. So uh, what would be your assessment as it relates to filling these positions? Are, is it anything out of the ordinary right now? Are you getting applicants? Uh, how do you feel about filling those positions in the upcoming year? Well, we had two vacancies that uh, within the um, underground utility division. Uh, both through voluntary separations and um, uh, we had I believe nine solid candidates that were interviewed for the positions had three uh, candidates for final candidates uh, first candidate found uh, was scooped up by someone else before we could finish the paperwork and we filled the other two positions and that was fairly rapidly that was within a month so it's depending upon the position um, the more skilled positions, uh, such as linemen, can be challenging when, uh, when we have to recruit for those positions. But again, the, the open lineman position we have right now, we're holding for that apprentice to mm -hmm. finish his program here shortly. So <clears throat> would it be safe to say that overall our situation here isn't anything out of the ordinary then as far as uh, people are leaving uh, the city and filling positions? Uh, not, I, I mean, it, it sounds as though this isn't any, anything that is uh, uh, a serious situation for us. Well, I can't speak for the other departments, and I'm not going to speak for the other departments. No, I meant but just, public works. Just from public works perspective, yeah. uh, it's, it's terrifying when staff leave. Um, we've had a number of staff leave for career advancement, sure. uh, where they've moved into management positions, which speaks well to the city that we hire good people and then train them up and then they get scooped up by other agencies. Uh, other ones that, that move for career advancement. Sure. Uh, but uh, I, we spend a substantial amount of time filling in positions within, within at least my department. Um, it's myself, Ben and Mira, we're all on each other's speed dial and uh, like with the rest of society, uh, the great resignation is coming to public works and it's going to come into a crashing wave within the next 60 months. So my focus since really I started here with support of the city administrator has really been on developing our internal house candidate and hopefully uh, they'll be here when that great resignation happens to move into those positions. So it's been a, it's been a constant, it's been a constant challenge. Uh, we're constantly comparing ourselves to other agencies. We're constantly comparing benefit packages. Uh, the employees are constantly comparing benefit packages. And uh, we hear about it. We hear about it when other agencies get uh, other holidays or um, their health care packages change or when there's rumblings about the pension adjustments. And staff pays a lot more attention to that than I think any of us really uh, want to admit freely. Okay. 
Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I guess the next question is, is uh, sort of as an overview as far as retirements and, and staffing looking over the next two or three years, uh, I know that we've had a number of retirements across the, the city. Uh, are we looking at uh, uh, that to continue? Uh, uh, just an overview on that might be helpful as well. Yeah, I don't know if Ben has the information, but I provided you all at the November strategic planning, um, just looking at quick numbers. There was, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but like 20% that could walk out the door tomorrow. Okay. And that's as a retirement. Not That doesn't include anybody who might leave to go work somewhere else. You know, we have a police officer leaving us this week to go to another agency. Um, so the next the next i would say rich says 60 months i would say your next 24 months you could see significant turnover because we're just we're at that point so um it's okay it's, it's a lot sure and but i can certainly give you more detailed no, information that's, i i just wanted to get a feel for it and uh, i you provided that so um in a lot of ways we're not any any different than uh the private sector than uh, that uh People are looking for opportunities to advance themselves, and and uh, sometimes your best people are those people that are going to move along. And uh, uh, how we develop bench strength, I think, is even more critical over the next five years. And and when we have an opportunity to give people responsibility, I think uh, that's going to be uh, be important. And that's probably a discussion for strategic planning, but uh, obviously. Uh, uh, personnel and, and salaries is a big part of our budget and uh, uh, keeping good people is critical so thank you thank you Alderman Kosserog I do have some questions but let, if I could just pick up a little bit on Alderman Kilberg's uh, questions there Stephanie I guess I don't know if this is appropriate but do you believe in this great resignation do you think that's going to happen and how do you feel the city um, is prepared for that I don't know that it's whether it's gonna happen or we believe in it I think it is happening okay. it just may not have hit the city yet um, what I was referring to with Alderman Kilberg is just looking at a normal year and normal retirement age and all things status quo we have a wave coming um, and that's 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 a that's a known fact Factor in everything else that's going on, people liking different work lifestyles, liking to be able to remote work. Unfortunately, many of the jobs in the city are not geared towards remote work. I can't have, you know, police and firefighters working from home or snowplow drivers working from home. So, um, you know, I don't know if the great resignation is a good term, but I definitely think we are seeing changes in workforce and changes in, um, you know, municipal government is not necessarily where everybody wants to be anymore. So I think I think we have our, our I think Ben and Mira have their work cut out for them in the next few years. Okay, great. Thanks for commenting on that. Um, I did have some questions. The um, Garden Club Park for one hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. I know we don't have anybody from the park district mm -hmm. here tonight, but uh, could you tell us about that? That seems like a sure. big chunk of change well actually um so if you're all familiar garden park is the park that is located right adjacent to the river um right off of uh, river lane uh, so you have river park and garden park is that smaller park it was it was built i think or put together by the garden park club many years ago and then the city has ownership and we entered into an agreement with the park district so that they maintain it and take care of take care of it um, what they want to do is really exciting and they've been working for a couple years with the garden club group um, they kind of want to open the view to the river right now when you go to that park you don't see the river and that's probably the best feature of that park so they want to clean out some of the the brush and some of the older tr when I say older trees I'm talking scrub trees they want to keep some of the birch the river birch and some of the beautiful trees but they want to create more of a gathering place more of a, a seating area with a view towards the river as opposed to the way it is now it views towards the parking lot so it's a complete I would say reimagination, reoverhaul, um, and it's super exciting. They they've gotten some plans and, and got some cost estimates. So what they're asking is the city to just partner 50%. They will get some ongoing um, funding from the Garden Club themselves because they're also um, very invested in this property. So, 
Okay. Is this, uh, I guess, call me a newbie on this one. Is this normal for us to, to spend? I, I understand we have a partnership. We own the land. Yeah, it's our, it's our park. Yeah, it's our park. <laughs> but uh, is it, do we normally outlay? that type of uh, we do of all funds. kinds of capital improvement projects whether it be streetscape whether it be um, landscape so uh, the difference is is that many of our parks that we've owned in the past we've actually just transferred to the park district and given them full responsibility this one I don't I don't remember what the thought process was but we do have a a long-term 50-year I think IGA with the park district that's renewable um, because I don't think the city at the time wanted to just give them full reign of this park um, so I don't, I don't think it's completely unusual. There's a lot of times we partner with various, various other uh, government agencies to do projects. Okay, great. Um, the, um, I guess the American Rescue Plan funds the $2.9 million. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Maybe I, I felt like it was kind of brief on the presentation. <laughs> Obviously that's great. Uh, and, uh, I know we talked a little bit about the strategic planning, um, but maybe talk about how we plan on using that money a so, little bit So more. right now, um, like I said, the final guidelines just came out January 6th. Today is January 24th. So before we made any grand plans or grand suggestions to the council of how to expend those funds, we wanted to make sure we understood what we're allowed to do with those funds so that we don't end up in a situation that we spend them on one project and then all of a sudden when the audit happens, we find out it wasn't an allowable expense and we have to pay those back. Um, so what we had talked about at strategic planning is basically four buckets. Um, I think it was about 700,000 towards lead line replacement because we know we need to, that, that's an important health and safety issue and we need to get that moving. Uh, we talked about programming about a million dollars towards facility needs, city's facility needs. Um, another 700,000 which we programmed for next year for storm stormwater drainage we, you know we've been doing the citywide uh, stormwater sh watershed study is that the right term uh, so we've, we've looked at funding some of those projects and then the remainder there's about I think 500,000 left that we were looking at potentially doing either grant programs or something to improve some of the infrastructure in our downtown area it's starting to get a little dated it's been 20 years since since the downtown was was kind of created with that streetscape um, but again, we don't have anything solidified. That would be discussions we would be having with the council once we know what those guidelines are and how we can actually use those funds. And we would be having those discussions with you all to program either still this year or next year. Again, I don't feel like there's a rush because we have until December of 2024 to get them budgeted and we have until 2026 to actually expend the funds. So I think it's a good time for us to do some mindful planning activities and making sure that we're really putting the money where it would have the most impact. Okay, great. Seems like that's going to be a huge help for the city and, and bring out some uh, much needed and exciting plans. Um, I'm glad you mentioned the, um, the grant program because I saw that a lot in the narrative in here as far as objectives. And I guess I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what that is. Is it new? Uh, has it been there? It sounds like it's new. It does, yeah, it doesn't exist. Okay. It is a goal. You probably saw it a lot because you saw it in a goal in the finance exactly. department, a goal in the economic development department, and a goal in my department for us to work together to create some kind of grant program. Again, right now, today, big picture, we think there, there's a need out there. And again, it's more to look at how we either repurpose some of these old buildings for the newer uses that we are seeing you know every everybody wants more experiential type of i think you've heard kathleen talk about it all the time they they don't want to just shop they want to do something so it's looking at how we can facilitate getting getting the right people in the right spaces and what those spaces might need but we really again that's a goal that we have set so we can sit down and be creative and think about what that looks like and just to be clear though is that grant is not necessarily related to the American Rescue Plan 500,000. It, it may or may not be, but yeah. again, that all that that's why it's a goal to look at what that looks like, and then once we figure out what it looks like, then we figure out how we fund it. Okay. Okay, great. Um, okay, now I guess I I uh, want to get into kind of the the one subject that kind of. It's jumping out at me, uh, which is the Geneva History Museum. Um, talked a little bit about it already tonight, but um, 
trying to get to that page on here, but uh, we heard the, the I think $51,000 is what you said. Um, there were also, there was also a line item for outside services for about $8,000. Does that have anything to do with transferring the documents to the Geneva History Museum as we discussed when? Ms. No, none, none of that has been discussed. That I think that is actually going to be a longer term project that we probably need to look at okay. what documents we would want to take, what that looks like, how long. So nothing has been programmed for that or is recommended programmed for that. So all the line item for the, I think it was program support is either the Geneva Chamber of Commerce or the Geneva History Museum. It's the Geneva Chamber of Commerce History Museum or support that the city provides for the chamber for festivals and those types of things. Okay, so some of that like police and things like that will come out of there too. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So um, how much are we, you gave us the number for the Geneva History Museum, how much for the Chamber of Commerce? Chamber, because that total. It's, it's 153,000. 150. It's, again, it's three fifths of the, right. when you look at the revenue line item, the hotel motel tax, just take that number. And that's the number we use to calculate the three fifths, the two fifths, which is now the one fifth, one fifth. Gotcha. Um, I don't know, I guess before I go too far into depth on, you know, this, you know, I, I just want to throw out there now, maybe other people can pick up on it. I have concerns about this money, this amount of money going to the Geneva History Museum and this budget. Um, I could go into detail, but if I'm the sole, sole per, per, person here, the sole alderman here that has a concern about it, then I guess I don't need to to do all that. So uh, I guess I'd be looking for some feedback from other aldermen if there's a reason to maybe get into that further discussion either tonight or next Monday. Um, I do have some thoughts and some specific points on it, but again, I, I don't wanna waste our time here if, if I'm alone on that. Um, so I'd just be looking for, for some feedback, uh, if any at all, from other aldermen on that issue but I definitely am concerned about, uh, about that. I, I guess I will say, uh, as part of that discussion, you know, we're recovering from COVID. Uh, we took a hit on the tourism fund. That means the chamber took a hit on the tourism fund. Um, we recovered better, I think, than we thought we were going to there, and that's great. But now we're taking some of that and giving it away to a new entity and that concerns me when right now maybe we should be concerned about, more concerned about our image and all the things that the chamber does for us uh, rather, it, it, rather than taking, essentially taking money away from them. Is, is that a good way? So you're not actually taking any money from the chamber. You're okay. taking money away from the city and its efforts in tourism. So any special okay. projects the city would like to initiate for tourism, okay. that's where the money is, is. So for example, we removed, the tourism fund was gonna pay partially for some of the welcome signs. We have now moved that to a different fund. Okay. Um, I talked about the market study to find out where people come to shop downtown. We're now paying for that out of the general capital fund, which is from a transfer from the general fund. So that's, that's kind of, but, but as far as the chamber dollars, the council's, um, consensus was to leave them at their, and it's by agreement, so we would have to change the agreement if we wanted to change it anyhow, to leave them at their... Uh, Three-fifths. 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 Thank you. What about other projects we discussed at strategic planning, like uh, the um, French Market Pavilion and things like that? Are those put on the back burner now because of this? Uh, no, there, it's still, I think the French Pavilion, I don't remember, that was a different capital fund, wasn't it? Or no, it took, we took it out, I'm sorry. Kathleen, feel free to come up and speak. <laughs> I, I've got so many different budgets I in my totally head. I totally understand. <laughs> so, you know, I think that there are a lot of needs that could be met in the tourism fund. Um, we have tried to apply for grants. We've got several grants out there, applications right now, because we just don't have enough money in the tourism fund to cover them all. Some of the things that we see as needs, um, 
you know, updating the streetscape, the French Market Pavilion, doing something with the courthouse kiosk. Um, and then you always have the demand about um, improving wayfinding signage. You have um, outdated and antiquated um, directory signs, which, you know, could be electronic, could be, could be better. Just basic signage directing people um, off of Third Street onto the side streets. Um, and then the big one is, you know, public washrooms. So you do have needs that, you know, whether it's the tourism fund or whether it gets programmed in the general fund, but the needs definitely exceed the ability of the, um, that fund in particular. Um, we, we've, we've thought that there would be, you know, after the entrance signs are done, there'd be another big capital, another big capital. I think the thing that we put into the budget for the forecast was the courthouse kiosk. We've been chasing a grant for that for um, well over, we're gonna submit another one for three years now. So yeah, there, I mean, there's, there's other needs too. That aren't able to be met with the current revenue and uh, expenditures, allocated expenditures. Right, I mean, yeah. it, you know, spend time talking to the, some of the stakeholders in the downtown. You know, I think that too, you know, the cities at some points proposed other mechanisms. You know, we've, there was a proposal for, you know, a business district and that thought that that would be, um, you know, taxing the visitor to try to also generate money. So there's, there's needs that we see um, in our forecasts for just keeping the area's vitality and, you know, the destination factor. Um, like I said, we, we've, been, we've been chasing some grants. I think, I think we have a few applications out right now um, for different things to try to try to generate money that would match, that the tourism fund perhaps could match or the general fund, whatever the council decides. Thank you. <clears throat> I mean, I think uh, I misunderstood exactly how the, the money was gonna be allocated, but I think the point is the same, which is we could make literally Geneva uh, a physically attractive, better place to be, um, I'm not taking anything away from the history museum or the importance of history or, uh, or things like that. But I, I just, I'm sorry, it just really, I, I'm not seeing it right now as a post COVID recovery where a museum is a, is a priority over, over things like what Kathleen just mentioned. I'd like to see our money spent elsewhere. And so I'll leave it at that again. And if other people agree or disagree, please chime in. But, uh, that's it for me now. Thank you. Anyone else from the dais or remotely? <clears throat> Alderman Kilberg, sir, then Alderman Swanson. Um, <clears throat> with the, uh, the passage of the infrastructure legislation uh, at the federal level uh, this year, uh, uh, how do we look at uh, uh, trying to secure some of those federal funds that probably will filter down through the state how, uh, are we, uh, are we, uh, how do we get shovel ready so that when these funds become available that we're the first in line? Uh, obviously we've got lead pipe issues as far as infrastructure. We got the sewer issue across the Fox and, uh, and we've got stormwater, uh, that's lurking out there as well. A big, uh, a big price tag on stormwater that we need to address at some point in time over the next decade. What's staff's thoughts on uh, on uh, preparing so that maybe we can uh, tap into some of those federal uh, and state dollars as it relates to infrastructure? Because I really sense that those dollars are going to start flowing pretty quickly here, uh, and that. Uh, uh, how do we capitalize on that? Maybe Stephanie can tackle yeah. that one. Well, I'll just say your, your timing is impeccable okay. um, because just today, this evening, actually, we got an email um, from one of our representatives 
kind of giving us a fact sheet and all the grants that will be available or anticipated to be available under this federal bill. Um, I would note that there hasn't been a federal capital bill for quite some time. So we really haven't, that hasn't been in our, our viewpoint, but um, I will let Rich talk a little bit. We have been fairly successful in getting some state grants, um, but we are always looking for funding. We are always trying to, to leverage um, whatever we can leverage from outside to, to supplant our, our funding. But Rich, do my, you want to speak My thought is, is how do we get proactive here so that, so that when the time comes and, and, we, and the request needs to be made, we've got the homework done so that we can be the first in line and seize the opportunity. Uh, and uh, I mean, there's a lot of money that's going to be flowing into the economy. And uh, how, do we, how do we seize that opportunity? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rich. <laughs> well, there's um, some good news. Last Friday, we received final confirmation from IDOT that they have accepted the recertification of the Phase 1 study for the East State Street project. Okay. So that project uh, will be moving into property acquisition here uh, probably within the next several months. And we've been getting that project shovel-ready since 2002. Understood. Yeah. So that's probably our best shot. We got that one ready. Don't I we? think we got that one good to go. Um, as Stephanie has already alluded, we are putting in the final reviews on the citywide drainage basin study that looked at the city holistically and their drainage needs. Uh, so that includes capital development plan as well as a pretty fairly I, w I wouldn't say well-defined because we don't have design documents for the, the needed infrastructure, but we have pretty well fleshed out needs. Uh, so we're setting the stage for that. Um, uh, we are also in the uh, proposed budget. There is the engineering study for the river crossing mm -hmm. for the twin sanitary sewers. So that'll be another one that'll be in the hopper, so to speak. And also, uh, was it? Two weeks ago, the survey went live, the lead, lead, lead service survey. So uh, Bob's, Bob's team and the engineering GIS division uh, and KSTAR uh, spent a lot of time over the winter developing a survey that's gone live with the residents to help identify lead services within the community. So in addition to our database research as well as that survey, um, we're, I think we're in pretty pretty good shape for uh, tackling the lead line services, the drainage issues, the roadway infrastructure. Uh, the North Couts Road project is uh, in its final engineering and will probably be targeting the June 22 leading. Mm -hmm. So that'll be under construction the second half of the year. So if the infrastructure money really came up that fast, um, that and East State Street are probably going to be our best candidates. But then the rest of these, um, because the strategic plan says you want to be a data-driven organization. Uh, we have been spending a lot of time over the last several years developing that data to define the needs and uh, put us in a, a good position. Well, good. I appreciate the overview on that. And uh, the reason I ask the question is I think the public needs to know that a lot of these things are in, in a state of progress and that uh, when the opportunity presents itself, uh, uh, we're uh, we're not scratching our head. Obviously, we've talked about a lot of these projects that you've just referenced, and uh, they're obviously all in various stages of development. But uh, I, you know, I, I just sort of see that as a priority, and that uh, uh, as we look at the next two to three years here, uh, uh, hopefully, some of these will, uh, uh, you know, that there'll be a reward for your labors, and that. Uh, that we can uh, we can reap some of those federal funds that uh, that'll be filtering back into Illinois probably pretty aggressively. And, and I would also say uh, one that I um, forgot to mention was the facility assessments. Uh, also, because um, you never know what what the criteria is going to be. So we have sure. there's there's a wide variety out there that we can pounce on. Good. So we got a lot of different ways to spend it if we get it. We're, we're, we're pretty good at spending money in public works. I don't know if you've seen the budget. Unless it's Thanks, Rich, for... Uh, Can I just ask a follow-up to that? Southeast Master Plan, would that follow up some of that? Kathleen's nodded her head yes, so I, I would say yes. 
So again, it depends on what the criteria of the grants are. There, there's a number of grants that Kathleen has been pursuing with economic development and the developer themselves. As a matter of fact, the city has a grant uh, with the focus on building the substation. And so there, you don't know what, what the grant is going to be eligible for until you see the grant. Right. right. Uh, and some of them are fairly straightforward, only take three years to do, like a sidewalk grant. <laughs> Others are a lot more complicated, such as a development <coughs> grant like the Kathleen's working through. Thanks, Rich. Mm -hmm. uh, to Alderman Kilber's point, the, the, the bill is known as IJA, I-I-J-A, and just recently we've had conference calls with uh, Raja Krishnamurthy, Congresswoman Underwood, Senator Duckworth, Senator Durbin, Senator Kasten, and others, and to a person, the response is, yeah, you know, soon we should have all the detail. <laughs> There's really no clear and concise direction as how to grab your share of the 17 billion coming to Illinois. So that's the, yep. well said though. Alderman Swanson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we've spent a lot of time talking about expenses. Obviously another important factor are revenues. And, and one thing I noticed in the, the summary that we had is that the sales tax revenues seem very conservative compared to what we're experiencing this year. And for example, a week ago in our interim financial packet, we received an update that estimated sales tax to be 6.2 to 6.4 million. Yet in our packet for the budget, we're showing 5.2 as the projection for this year and the next year and the next year. So my question is, uh, why are we considering, uh, number one, that sales tax revenue will decrease and what is, are we just being ultra conservative? Is, I guess that's my yeah, question. Yeah, so I'll speak a little bit to this and if Rita wants to add, she's more than welcome to join me at the podium. Um, we tend to be ultra conservative, so I will say that first and foremost, because again, because you cannot make your expenditures unless you have revenue, we don't want to be in a situation where we have over forecasted our revenue. So then we end up with a bunch of projects and things that we cannot accomplish because we don't have that corresponding revenue. Having said that, part of the reason we are being conservative in this next year with the sales tax is, is we don't know really what it's all doing. There was a new uh, law that came into effect and became effective uh, January 1 of 2021, um, which is the Marketplace, Fair, the Mar Marketplace, Fairness, Marketplace Act. Fairness Act, which essentially means that all the stuff that you're buying online, now a part of the local sales tax comes back to the local municipality. That did not used to be the case. Um, Amazon was doing it for a long time willfully and on its own, but now other uh, retailers are required to do that as well. So we're trying to see how that really is playing out because with that, it also changed um, on who gets the revenue. Some, some of it is destination-based, some of it is purchase-based, and so we, we just really wanna feel it out before we rely too heavily on it. Um, but certainly it's the council's prerogative. If they wanna see that revenue number different in the budget, we can up it. Um, anytime we take in more revenue than we expense out, it ultimately ends up in the fund balance. And then that ultimately becomes money that we can use for long-term long range planning or, or larger projects. Or reserves. Or reserves, exactly. Rainy day fund. And, and the other line item that I noticed was interesting was our property tax revenue is actually projected to decrease in 2023. And I wondered if that was uh, a plan because we are no longer funding any uh, debt service um, or if- That one I might have to rely on Rita, but give me a minute. Or give us a minute. Specifically, it's going from 5.595 million in 2022 projected to 5.563 in 2023. So, Finance Director Rita is gonna join us and hopefully help explain. Um, no, it's not because of the debt service. That's in the fund that Stephanie talked about earlier, the $301,000, um, fund 301 where that money's coming from. So I'll go back and take a look at that to see why it's off a little bit. Um, 
I really, off the top of my head, cannot tell you why. I mean, you talk about the graph. You did pass $156,000 difference between last year and this year. Or, sorry, 2022 to 2023, which was just the increase that we can typically get from PTEL, which is all we can really take. So I will have to go back to look at the projection and see. May I possibly made an error in there? I'm not quite sure. I just don't have the details to look at it right now. Okay. Very, very good. And what then... Go ahead. Yes, sir. All yours. I was just going to say I will wait until I, we get the more detailed expense information tomorrow to, to come up with more, uh, more expense questions. So thank you. Alderman Marks, sir. Yeah, and then it, Alderman it, Ruby. It, it, it. Stephanie, maybe this is possible, maybe it's not. But a lot of the capital improvements go across a bunch of different funds. Is there any place where we can see what, like every, like yes. in total? I, I didn't see it, but again, I didn't get through every line item. So here there yet. are... Um, Two charts for capital improvements. One is by fund, right? I and saw one that. is by type. Okay. So if you look at the, and I don't, we're both. I think, but we're both are only one included. Both charts included in the packet. I saw the breakdown. So table. By, I, don't I could have missed it. I could have. But yeah, but um, I will also point it out to you when I if send you, you so that that's I can all. show you, but. But that's why we do it both ways, because yeah. things that will be used primarily, you'll see it in public works. Mm -hmm. If we have, for instance, this brush mower, if it's going to be used by the utility, then it's, the cost is shared with the utilities. Yeah. And that's why I was just So that's at usually the, the breakout that you see. And that's why um, I only have the fund one here in front of me, but the one that's by type, you'll see the full cost of whatever that yeah. piece of equipment is. I only saw the fund one. That's why I was asking. But I could have missed it. I mean, it was a lot to go through quickly There's thank you different cuts of the same thing yeah it is it just shows yeah. the overall cost right exactly the the numbers are identical right. it's just how we break it out and and display it yeah thank you alderwoman ruby uh, did you ever hand up no nope. alderman caven sir sorry about that thank you um <laughs> yeah which which one <laughs> uh stephanie uh, you were talking a little bit before with some of the additional um revenue that we're going to get from the u.s government and kind of like that maybe five hundred thousand dollars towards some type of a grant plan for streetscape for things like that potentially if if, if that winds up playing out that way um we do have other grant programs that people on an annual basis submit money for i realize that we're not talking about streetscape i know this is something different but what what are some of the or other organizations that regularly apply for grants that we that we give out is isn't there is, is there nothing uh, we used to have various grants we used to have like a facade grant program we no longer have that that was part of uh, the downtown business district when that was in place um but i thought there was something for some of the different not-for-profit organizations or things like that so well. the mental health board it's done by levy um okay. it is spelled out by state statute and we passed a referendum so they get their funding from our property tax levy um, the only ones that, if you want to call, are our city committees, so they're not outside organizations. There are no other outside organizations that we provide funding to other than the chamber right now and next year the History Museum as the budget is presented. Okay. And if I may backtrack for one second, Alderman Marks, yes. in the packet, if you look on page... 98 of the packet that'll start the capital uh, projects that are by type of project as opposed to by fund oh. okay. okay thank you sorry back to you <laughs> no problem i know there's a lot of uh there, there's a lot of numbers and information flying around here so um well i i just wanted to bring this up because um alderman cosi rogue uh brought this up um specifically and inquire if there was anybody else who, who had any other thoughts um, I think that that amount for uh, on an annual basis um, to the museum I, I think is I think is, is is more than what it should be I mean if our Chamber of Commerce gets 153 a year and this is going to be 51 so they're roughly getting 33 percent of the overall total that the Chamber of Commerce gets um, I know a lot of the other things that you itemized in the downtown area, um, you know, the French Pavilion and on and on and, and so on and so forth. Um, to me, that seems, that seems a little bit much, um, even just looking at the percentage based off of what uh, the chamber does receive. I believe when we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, um, 
and we were talking about visitors, visitors to the museum. And I believe that the annual amount of visitors was like 10,000. And I believe it was stated that like 1,800 of them actually visit over the Christmas walk. So if you remove, if you remove that weekend from, from the total amount of visitors, uh, with that amount that comes to about $6.20 per visitor that the city is, is, is giving to the History Center for every additional visitor, for, for every of the 8,200 visitors they have, it's $6.20 per person. Um, when looking at the different festivals and the different things that we have in the, I mean, I don't know how many tens or, you know, with, with all of our festivals combined. I mean, I think if there was additional funds that that would be allocated to getting the most potential people to Geneva. And I believe it was also said that in order to give money out of that fund, it was supposed to be something that actually brings people here specifically for that reason to stay in those hotels, those hotels and motels. So I, I don't know how many people that is. I definitely think that it's, it's, uh, it, it's worthwhile to provide some funding, but that is an amount that I think is probably um, too high. And I bring that up because Alderman Kosi Rogue specifically posed that question. I know this is there's a, how many hundreds of pages of stuff over here, but I at least wanted to respond since he brought it up. Thank you. Could Thank I just make a quick comment on, on his, I think also on that 10,000, we have technically should take off student visits. Is there not ones that are contributing to our local economy and things like that? So I think that 10,000 included everybody, including those, those trips. Thank you. Alderman Mayor, did you have your hand up? Yes, then, all, then older woman, Ruby. Um, yes, thank you. Um, I have a couple questions, um, and I do want to address uh, Alderman Kossarog's uh, comments about the History Museum. The, um, Stephanie, this is for you. I noticed that the bridge, uh, the bridge railing study or design study is in here for $85,000. Uh, next to it, I don't see any 2024 expenditure to replace or repair the railing on the bridge. Is that, is that somewhere else in the budget then for 24? No, I, uh, once we have the cost for the, for the engineering and what it would cost, then we would, then we would program that next year. So keep in mind that fiscal year 24, we're trying to project what we're going to spend, but there's going to be changes throughout the year. But it is still, okay. we're not going to do the work. We're not going to do the study and then not do the work necessarily. Okay. And um, I noticed that the um, facility improvements uh, in the capital projects that are just general building improvements are scheduled for about $350,000 worth of uh, budget right now. Is that yeah, so what, what we did, other projects. sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, what we did, because we know there's still a lot of discussion that needs to be had and we need to formulate kind of what our next steps are. In the meantime, there, uh, we know that we need to repair the generator or get a new generator at the police department. And we know that we need to uh, address the ADA accessibility in this building with the lift. So you'll see those are scheduled separately in the, in the schedule. And then we put $350,000 to basically address needs that, that will have to be done regardless of what we do in the future. So if we have, um, I'm trying to think of a, but you know, an air conditioning go out or a heater exchange go out or whatever, we have basically we've put money aside knowing that we have needs. And once I get through all the spreadsheets from that we got from the facilities assessment. There are some just regular maintenance things we knew, some capital expenditures that have to be done regardless if we stay or if we go. Um, so that's really just, it was just a ballpark dollar. If we find we need more money, we would come back to the city council and say, we need to make a budget amendment and this is why. But it was really just to make sure that we had okay. some funding in there to address those issues. Okay, understood. 
Um, is the replacement of the wheelchair lift plan to be in kind or are we doing a design uh, change to that? We have, we are getting um, a proposal that kind of gives Sorry, us some <laughs> options. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure if I understood your question, but yeah, I don't know that it'll be in kind. It may be a ramp, it may be a different kind of lift, it may be outside the building, it may be inside the building. We are, we are investigating that as we, as we, or kind of as we sit here, not necessarily right tonight, but certainly we are in progress with that. Okay. Um, all I have for right now, um, I, I do think that the 51,000, considering what Kathleen said and, you know, when staff is telling us that there's needs that aren't going to be met, that, that concerns me. Um, I see things in the general fund that would normally have been in the tourism fund, I believe. Um, and I, I think reducing the amount to the history museum to start would be a good idea. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Alderwoman Ruby. Thank you. Um, just a, a quick comment on the uh, history museum. I, I still support the, the original um, proposal that we discussed and you know by following Gabe's math six dollars per visitor I, I recall during um, when the history museum when Miss Emma was here I think it was like 85 or 90 percent of their visitors are from out of town so if you know if the city is investing six dollars in in each person who's coming from out of town I think there's a very good chance that they are spending much more than six dollars in Geneva if they're at our history museum they're they're shopping and or eating also I I feel very confident that that's a safe assumption I, I just I, I just think it's a, a good investment. I think that the value that they provide to our city is tremendous, and we, we've already discussed all the details. I just wanted to point out the the money issue real quick. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Older woman Burghardt. Thanks. Um, another big ticket item I wanted to talk about or ask about the SEMP substation and feeders um was that coming from the electric fund or the general fund yeah so no that's that would be in the electric utility um they're still working through the design we do have a grant that we receive from the state for part of that and then uh likely we would need to bond for the remainder or cost of that but it is an electric utility expense and what would the timeline be is that a multi-year um i don't know if that's rich or kathleen who wants to talk timeline <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot. Do you guys just do rock, paper, scissors, see who had to answer that? Or? <laughs> Both of them were looking Both well. of them, I know. We have been working um, to have a um, filing of annexation from a developer that um, is, you know, the primary SEMP developer that they own over 200 acres. They did submit um, a partial submittal um, in December and we're working with them to uh, make sure that they have everything submitted so the project is looking to kick off and then there are other landowners there's um, a landowner that also wants to annex in along Fabian that we're on we've been uh, talking with them and we've been drafting an annexation agreement for for a couple months with them. And then we have um, another large property owner, uh, BEI, who um, did have uh, momentum with a developer a few months ago and continued to talk about annexation. So my understanding is that that project will be mobilized as soon as actually somebody files their, their um, paperwork and it's kind of see who's going to be first with their annexation. 
Okay, good news. And the, I mean, the substation is just a huge part of getting that ready to, to, right. to the infrastructure that's needed to make this whole project a reality. Right, right. and it has the longest calendar um, timing for when it has to be kicked off with respect to the relationship to when construction mm -hmm. can occur because of all of the intricate design and equipment and like Stephanie mentioned earlier, the backlogs with. So that's probably the, the first, the furthest out issue that um, will have to be addressed, which is why it's budgeted for this year. Very good. All right, thank you. Uh, oh, I guess another one, fuel dispensing system I'd seen. I know that was only 20,000, but. Well, actually it's across multiple funds. Okay. Um, so I will let Nate uh, tell us a little bit about that. Thanks. So our fuel dispensing system is roughly 20, it was, it was put in in 1998. It consists of two 10,000 gallon underground storage tanks. Uh, we are looking at, or actually we have been informed by multiple vendors that uh, they will no longer support our software. It's actually a DOS based program. So we have to actually tweak the it's computer. It's actually a DOS based it program? It is a DOS based program. It is that old. Oh my God. <laughs> So it is So did the index cards fail? Or did well, yeah, man. When the oh, my Lord. <laughs> Obviously, our emergency services count on that uh, uh, quite a bit. Yes. Uh, um, so we have had some issues there where the, the system has failed on us, and uh, we have had to go into emergency action plans to you know, find alternative sources of fuel for them. Uh, but uh, this would include uh, replacing that particular system, replacing that computer, the software, the hardware, uh, also look at uh, potential alternatives of bringing those tanks up out of the ground into secondary containment above ground tanks, uh, kind of reducing our load with the uh, fire marshal for testing, uh, annual required testing every year, uh, those kind of things. So that's, it's encompassing a lot of different things for that system. What does the software and everything do? Does it help you maximize I'm really dummy on this one. So tell me what, oh, how does question. this whole system work? So it, it provides multiple reports for us. We can do uh, miles per gallon. We can, uh, it obviously tracks uh, who, who pumps gas, uh, how much gas they pump, what vehicle it went into, uh, those kind of things. Uh, it also helps for our, our card system. So you actually have to physically have a key that you plug in. Uh, it asks you for your user ID, your password, uh, actually the mileage on the vehicles uh, so that actually talks to the fleet maintenance software and helps those guys with uh, you know where we're at for mileage for oil changes those kind of things uh, so there's a lot involved in that software but it is a royal pain to put, put it all together and put somebody <laughs> new into it is it's, it's it's a nightmare sounds like do you have like a dot matrix printer when it, it and honestly that? yes we do it's underneath <laughs> it, it prints out exactly uh, you know who who who, who got fuel <laughs> so yeah it sounds like a much needed investment it for is sure, it then. is definitely something okay. that is needed to upgrade very good thank you sure thank you mayor thank you <clears throat> alderman bruno you look very comfortable do you have any comments or <laughs> so when alderman bruno fills up his prius does that record exactly <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely man I, I fill it up so seldom that i have to think <laughs> about where the gas tank is Alderman no Bruno, comments. you look a lot like Burl Ives tonight. Let me just say that for the record. You look nice. <laughs> Sing silver and gold for us. Anyone else? Questions, comments? Is it the will of this committee that we uh, continue our discussions on the 31st, or would you prefer to wait to see about the volume of questions asked once the additional documents provided tomorrow. So I'll simply defer to your preference, but. <laughs> Enthusiasm over the budget. I, no, no, clarify what you're saying. Are you saying we, should we, we decide tonight if we're meeting a week from tonight? Yeah, or we, we held we the 31st as a meeting. Otherwise, do you wish to just wait to see what kind of questions are generated based on the additional information provided tomorrow? And we can certainly do that. It's still a, it's a, still a placeholder on Monday night. And if um, you know, we can take a survey again later in the week, it's up to you guys. Okay, we'll take no, a no, play. No. Yes, sir. Well, uh, based on the uh, questions and uh, obviously uh, if we met on the 31st, that would mean that staff would probably have to be with us again for that meeting. 
I just don't feel, I don't see a need really uh, to be here next Monday night to continue the discussion. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, any additional questions or comments for tonight? All the if, if we decide or maybe take a straw yeah, poll if, or whatever. Yeah, we can, we can check in later. Check in. And if I may, um, if there are specific questions that only yeah. involve specific funds, then all of staff would not have to be here. We would make sure. Ideally, I would know what the questions kind of are about so that I could have the appropriate staff available. Um, listening to tonight's discussion, if the History Museum funding is still in flux as to the amount, either tonight or next Monday, I would need a motion so that we know what to present for that budget that we would be presenting on the 7th. So that's, that's the only thing that I see that I, I, I don't know that I heard enough to change it, but I can't do that without a motion by this council. So again, I think if we want to meet on Monday or not want to meet on Monday, if we do meet, as long as I know kind of the general direction of the questions, then I would know which appropriate staff to have available um, or staff can attend virtually. <laughs> Mr. Kilbert? At least at this point in time, I'd say to leave the 51000 for the History Museum in the budget and uh, bring it forward then on the 7th. Uh, maybe it might be worthwhile just to at least get a feel for the, the council on it uh, so that you, you have direction. Would, would you appreciate that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Bruno concurs with Kilbert. I do as well. I'll agree as well. Does anyone disagree with that suggestion without casting a formal vote, unless you wish to make a motion? Does anyone disagree with that suggestion? I didn't really understand it. Alderman Kilberg's recommendation was that we put the placeholder in the budget for the February 7th consideration at the 20% and estimated at $51,000. Um, and then we just leave it. It's not up open for discussion oh, anymore. It's, a, it's absolutely open for discussion. But we would talk about it on the 7th. Correct. If you so choose. If we so choose. And, and any and every item, every line item on the 142 Obviously. pages can be discussed. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, we would just need motions on that evening. To... I, I just don't see that we're going to have any... <laughs> I don't see where we're going to have anything additional to add next Monday night as it relates to this. If there are any thoughts or questions or opinions on it, I think we can handle those on the 7th. That's all I've got. I wouldn't disagree with that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm not sure if that was a thumbs up or a middle finger from Kevin, but I think... <laughs> <laughs> You don't have your glasses on. You don't know. That's why, that's why I knew I could do it. But I do want to thank you for wearing the bright shirt because I know who you are. <laughs> Anyone else? If not, new business, public comment. Anyone joining us remotely, ladies and gentlemen? No. no? I know I've been fawning over this, but the, the situation was driving me crazy, so I'm just so happy. I want to thank Kathleen Tomashenko, Director Tomashenko, for working with the Little Owl on getting that little... Uh, uh, display or, or facade uh, decal or whatever up on the boarded up thing. I already thanked her earlier tonight, but uh, great job there. I think it's a huge improvement how that looks. Hopefully it helps. Is that the, the one, the, the image of you? I, am I sitting there drinking a beer on the bar? <laughs> <There's been> a <laughs> lot of ac Chief Pass really can concur. There's been a lot of accents <laughs> because of that. But thank you. I think that was great work. Anyone else? New business about anything? A motion to adjourn would be in order. Alderman Burkhart makes that motion. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Remote aye. participants concur. By the glaze in their eyes, they concur. Aye. This meeting is adjourned, folks. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.